Hi friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Ram Sudhir. Now today I will talk about how to actually look at current affairs. I will be taking a topic and teach you how to exactly learn current affairs or in fact, how do I get into a 360 degree approach with respect to current affairs. This is very important because Many a times uh, we prepare current affairs uh, from one perspective, either prelims perspective or the mains perspective. But it's very important that we look at current affairs from the exam perspective, whether it is for preliminary or whether it is for mains. So today's topic is basically about WTO or WTO has appealed against ruling by the dispute settlement body at the WTO that India violated its zero tariff commitment under information technology agreement so this is this can be put under gs2 international organizations now recently there was a case where india appealed against the india appealed against a ruling by the dispute settlement body at the wto that india violated its zero tariff commitment under the information technology agreement now when i am reading a topic first thing is one is there can be a question on the background okay there can be a question on the background two there can be a question straight on the current affair that means one option can be something related to the current affair third aspect is can i use this current affair somewhere in the mix so here when i'm looking at it i will look at it from three perspectives one can there be a direct current affair in the prelim two can there be a question on the background of this news so background can be something related to wto or background can be international information technology agreement or three or it can be also background can be on the dispute settlement body or the dispute settlement mechanism under wto or what are the issues with respect to the appellate body as part of the WTO. So if I look at it from this perspective, so there can be a background based question in these areas. Then when it comes to mains, where can I use it? So it can be in GS2 where we talk about international organizations or the relevance of the international organization. Do we think WTO is still relevant in spite of dispute settlement bodies or dispute settlement mechanism becoming irrelevant from 2019? Then why is it that this dispute settlement mechanism started becoming irrelevant comes the question. So it is it has become irrelevant because of lack of appointment of judges from 2019 or US specifically blocking the appointment and reappointment of judges to the appellate body. So there is an appellate body which sits and gives the judgments on the appeals which we make. As India has now made an appeal here, India appealed here, India knows that the judgment will not come. Why? Because you don't have judges who sit and give judgments. So there was this, it's a seven member body, the appellate body is a seven member body and you don't have judges who can sit and give judgments. And these judges are appointed once every four years. Now they are reappointed also. So this is the US has stopped or US has rejected the reappointment of judges or blocked the reappointment of judges. So this is one more context where we can look at WTO's relevance coming down. So do you think WTO is biased for the benefit of developed countries? Or is it that the relevance of the WTO in the recent past has reduced because of its crown body, that is a dispute settlement body, uh, being hit because of rules like rules made by or because of blocking of judges by these developed countries like US. Now these are the areas you will be looking at uh, WTO. And at the same time, when we start learning about this current affair, so it's very important to check what are the areas I will be looking at. So when I'm preparing this topic, I will talk about different, I will be understanding the different agreements under WTO. It can be the trade facilitation agreement under WTO, or it can be the agreement on agriculture under WTO, or it can be the trade related investment measures under WTO or it can be something like agreement on sanitary and phytosanitary measures or it can be something like trade related intellectual property rights 
or it can be something like agreement on technological barriers to trade or it is this agreement where we are talking about information technology agreement where the current current affair is a link to okay or there are agreements where you are talking about protection of sanitary and phytosanitary measures so this is how uh, i will look at this topic so here when i look at this topic from the mains perspective now these are the areas which i have to revise when i am preparing and this is about this topic that is international this is information technology agreement okay so the whole up, the whole appeal filed before the appellate body which is the highest adjudicating authority okay so it is like an appeal into the void right now because the body is currently dysfunctional because you don't have judges who are sitting so this area of appellate body becomes important for the preliminary now the question comes up why is india come why did india come up with this appeal so india's logic is very simple when it signed this agreement related to information technology there were no products such as smartphones so smartphones are not part of this particular information technology agreement and therefore it is not bound to eliminate tariffs on such items so this agreement basically covers ita information technology agreement it basically covers high technology products for example it covers something like the computers it can cover some telecom equipments telecom equipments okay it can also cover something like the semiconductors which is again very important in news now i'll talk about semiconductors in the subsequent uh, current affair discussion this topic is basically how to look at current affairs it is not about learning about this particular topic but how do i look at a 360 degree approach for a current affair so semiconductors and then software so here there is nothing like a mention of uh, smartphones and this is how india was trying to put its view point forward okay so now today the context is though wto has so many agreements the main crown body that is the dispute settlement body is under trouble or the whole dispute settlement mechanism is under trouble because of appellate body getting into trouble without because of lack of judges who can sit and give judgments now so going a little about the background of wto wto came into existence based on marrakesh agreement and wto uh, came into existence in 1995 based on the uruguay round that took place under wto under the gat agreement between 1987 to 1994 this is basically the uruguay round under the gat gat is general agreement on trade and tariff so which agreement laid the foundation of wto that can be a prelims question so from the background basically so the agreement that laid the foundation of wto is nothing but the marrakesh agreement so this is something going to the background of wto and uruguay round which is the eighth multilateral trade negotiation under gat laid the foundation of wto and hence for wto has replaced uh, uh, gat and wto currently has 164 members and its headquarters is in geneva this is a little background with respect to wto so now currently from the mains perspective then comes the mains perspective so in the mains perspective what is what are the things i have to look at now so what are the main issues suppose i have to talk about uh, why wto is biased for the benefit of w, uh, developed world or currently what is the exact trouble first of all i should know the issues that are there with wto right now okay so many issues that are still not resolved under wto and there are lot of issues that are coming up so one aspect is there are several concerns that started developing in wto which are called as emerging trade issues or we call them as new issues which mainly started coming up in the nairobi discussion itself that is the nairobi ministerial conference 2015 now these concerns are not kept pace with the 21st century trade so there is a discussion that 
new issues such as linking trade with climate change or sustainable development goals gender issues human rights issues now these things they started bringing it into the ambit of wto for discussion which india did not like it india wants these things to be discussed in the respective platforms so india wants environment to be discussed in unf triple c india wants labor related issues or human rights labor related issues to be discussed in international labor organization so this is one emerging issues is one aspect which is an issue there so this is will be my side heading when i'm writing names then another issue is with respect to members like india and china their development status so development status is basically something like in wto wto does not recognize or give any definition for a developed or a developing nation so what wto does is basically it comes up with uh, in wto there is a self designation with respect to developing or developed so when you self designate yourself now you have a certain benefits which you get in the form of special and differentiated treatment so you are given some special preferences so now there is a conflict saying that countries like india or specifically china you do not you should not be taking the benefits of a developing country rather you cannot self designate yourself as a developing country because you're growing very fast and your science and technology and defense in fact in few areas are better than us as well china so therefore china be careful with respect to your status or uh, and then another issue in the uh, wto is with respect to the dispute settlement crisis as i have mentioned so this is another issue dispute settlement crisis now you can't get any judgments because the appellate body is not working and us has blocked the appointments to the appellate body so it is like you don't have any proper mechanism in place then we have something like inadequate monitoring mechanism so currently there is no appropriate monitoring mechanism in wto okay and there is this green room mechanism which is seen in wto which is not correct green room mechanism is something like only you're not inviting all the wto members sitting and discussing as a multilateral body but rather few uh, uh, closed group uh, entities sit and discuss their topics of their interest like e-commerce etc so this is not correct again and then we have rising protectionism deglobalization etc increasing respective countries and they are trying to protecting protect their own uh, personal interests now developing countries concerns are still not addressed or whatever that came up in the uruguay round are not still not concluded there is developmental issues for example even till now there is no full solution with respect to food security or public stock holding or aspects related to the domestic subsidy under agreement on agriculture and till now doha round whatever is discussed in the doha round is still not concluded and doha round is not concluded but you are they started coming up with emerging new issues like e-commerce or sustainable development and welfare and human rights and gender issues so this is a trouble in the wto right now okay so and there are other issues also in wto uh, where uh, there are uh, problems for ldcs also at least developed countries so ldcs also uh, started fighting in wto because uh, ldcs are not in a position to reverse retaliate with respect to several countries so now this is one more area so this is how i look at this topic so looking at this topic becomes very important just to give you a brief picture now still it's not over now once we have seen the issues then you should also look at another perspective here what should be done basically to bring in a kind of a reform in wto that also becomes important so now in the green sketch which i'm drawing here is something like what reforms are required in wto in fact what has to be done so obviously the dispute settlement mechanism has to be strengthened if you want to really make wto work and another important aspect is there is a need for institutional reforms in wto there is a need for institutional reforms in wto
Now these can be used as my side headings in mains. So WTO's decision making process if it has to improve, some reform proposals have been called for in the creation of an executive committee. So this committee can address lack of leadership at the WTO. Okay, and it can help in further negotiations, etc. Another important aspect is balancing those demands that is being a balance between the developmental issues which were there from the beginning and also discussing the emerging or the new issues. That balance has to be maintained by WTO. Otherwise, there will be uh, a difficulty. Similarly, the, the voice of LDCs or the smaller countries have to be increased and there should not be pushing of political and economic pressure on these countries or the, the LDCs. This is again another important aspect that is important. Then transparency has to be increased in WTO, especially with respect to green room. So the... WTO members should refrain from green room mechanism. This should not be there because it is spoiling the basic idea of WTO. Okay, so the basic idea in WTO which we talk about multilateral trade. So along with that, some technical assistance to the developing countries also has to be increased. Technical assistance to the developing countries uh, should be increased with respect to adhering to the norms of WTO. Okay, so then uh, WTO, there is also an aspect here where uh, it, there's a need for WTO to expand its scope Okay, at the same time, at the same time scope in the sense, so for example, when we talk about digital trade, e-commerce, semiconductors, etc. So the scope doesn't su suffice because you are growing at a faster pace. So all these are kind of reforms which you have to bring in. So I hope now this, so my dear friends, uh, the purpose of this video is basically to teach you or to tell you basically how to look at a particular topic. It's not about like, oh, WTO, they have not signed something like, there is, we have gone ahead and appealed for something like uh, in the WTO because uh, there was an issue with respect to information technology agreement. It's not like that. It's like the exam uh, dynamics are changing. So I will come up with another topic about uh, CCI, that is the Competition Commission of India, which was already asked in GS2 again. So CCI question was asked in recent mains and the CCI amendments currently have been brought in. So stay tuned and any current topics where you need guidance and looking at current affairs, please do comment in the comment box. You like my videos, please do comment and share my videos. Okay, so that's all signing off. Thank you. All the best.